Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 17 of my Java video tutorial series. Today, we're going to talk about threads and the date class. Now, don't let threads come across as being convoluted and complicated, because they're not. Whenever you say that a block of code is a thread, what that means is it's notifying the Java interpreter that not only is it going to run, but other threads or other blocks of code are going to run at exactly the same time and execute, print things out the screen or whatever needs to be done all synchronously. And this is going to be part one of the threads tutorial. I'm going to cover everything about threads, the old way of doing it, the new way of doing it, and all those different things. And just think about how your computer is able to check email, download stuff, play videos, and all that all at the same time. That's threads. This program here, what it's going to do is output the current time, and then at a specific time, it's going to execute other code without stopping the printing of the time on the screen. So there's some things we need to import here. We're going to get ourselves Java utility library. And what this is going to be used for is uh, to get the date and for locale or location that are specific to date and then we're going to get text to be able to edit or format dates and then we're going to come in here and go public class we're going to call this get time 20 and we're going to say extends thread and what this does is this allows us to use and access all those different methods that come in the thread class just extending this guy just like we've done in all the other previous guys. Now all the code that the thread executes must be inside of the run method. So we're going to go click void run and of course it can also execute any other methods that is called from inside of run. You need to do that. So now I'm going to create a whole bunch of fields here. Date and I'm going to show you in a second what all these different things mean. Locale which is going to tell the interpreter to do things specifically based off of where the country of origin things like that. Okay, now I'm going to show you what all these different guys mean. First thing we're going to do inside this thread is create a for statement. i is equal to, and I'll say 1, and this is going to continue to execute everything inside of here until we reach 20 for i. And this right here means increment i by 1. I've gotten that question a bunch of times, so the only reason I'm bringing it up. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to create a date object, and it's going to contain all kinds of date and time data. And I called it right now above, so I'm going to go equals new date. Call the constructor for that guy. Make sure you put the braces in there. Then we're going to go current locale is equal to new. We're going to call the locale constructor. And I'm going to put English inside of here. And it's going to get all the information or organize it in a way specific to the English region. Now I could do finish by putting FI inside of there or Bangladesh if I wanted just by putting BN inside of there. But I'm going to leave it EN. If you want to know what all the other codes are underneath this video, I have a link to all those different codes depending upon country of origin. Origin. And now we're going to use date format. And what it's going to allow you to do is define different dates and times using predefined styles and so forth. And I'm going to go time formatter, which I defined above. I'm going to go date format. And in this situation, I just want to get time information, not date information. And here's where I can define what type of format I want. And I'm going to use default. People always ask me, oh, what sort of things can we do after you watch these videos? Well, instead of putting default in here, Try putting in short, medium, long, or full, and see how the dates and times and all those different things change. And then we're going to put current locale, which is going to give me country-specific information, and just like that. Then basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to get not just the time, but I'm also going to get the date information that is going to be specific for the current time. Well, if I want to do that, I'm going to change this to date, and I'm going to change this instead of get time, I'm going to say get date, and I can leave everything else the same. So this first one's going to get me time and the second one's going to get me date. And then if I want to output these to screen, I'm going to need to call time formatter and then I need to say format what? Format right now, which is going to be a specific date. And I just go there and then change this to date and then change this to date. And that's all that's doing is just converting them into strings so they can easily be printed out to screen. System out print line and I'm going to output time output, which you're going to see what that is here in a second. Go in there and change that to a period. Change that into a semicolon. Yeah, I'm going to copy that, paste, paste. I'm going to throw this guy in here just to, for a new line. And then this guy I'm going to change into date. And then before we exit out of our for loop, a couple other things we need to do. You must wrap any type use of the sleep method, which is part of the thread class, inside of a try block so that we can handle any errors that are going to get thrown. 
and to tell your code to sleep, this is milliseconds, for two seconds, let's say, you just put 2,000 inside of there. Then it's gonna say, okay, well, we're gonna go and get all this information here. We're gonna basically sit here and sleep for two seconds. And then you need to put the catch down here and we're gonna catch interrupted exception, which is thrown every single time we call sleep. And we don't really need to do anything, so let's just put that there. And everything else is perfectly fine. And all this code is available underneath the video. And before we leave, I just noticed need to put time output here and then file save it. Let's jump over into lesson17.java and we're gonna start playing around with this thread. Okay, the first thing we're gonna need to do is create a new thread that executes all the code that we defined in that previous class called get time 20 and I'm gonna call it get time and go equals new, call the constructor. And then if I wanna execute all of the code that exists back in that class inside of the run method, it's real easy. I just go get time dot start, call this start method, file save it, execute. And you can see over here on the left side of the screen that it's printing out both the time and the date, right like that. And it's gonna to continue to do that every two seconds for 20 iterations. And that's gonna run forever, even if I go and create other additional code that I wanna execute, which is exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna jump over into get mail. Now what this is gonna do is it's gonna be printing out this date and time information. However, every 10 seconds, it's gonna to check to see if there is any additional mail or whatever. It's actually just gonna print a message out to the screen, but you get the point. Now let's look back here for a second at get time 20. You can see here that I'm extending the thread class. Well, that's not always the best thing to do because remember you can only extend one class. So get time 20 is a subclass of thread, but you can only ever extend one class. Well, that's where the runnable interface comes in because remember we can use a ton of different interfaces and pretty much get the same sort of thing done. So let's go public class and this guy's going to be called get the mail because that's the name of the thing. And then remember, if we want to use an interface, we use implements runnable, right like that. And then let's create all the code that we need here. First thing we're going to do is create a private int and it's going to be start time, right like that. It's just going to figure out how long before we go and start having to execute code. So create a constructor here and it's going to be past the start time, which is again, how long it's going to take before we execute. Then we're going to set for the specific object, start time is equal to start time that is being passed into it. So there's a constructor and that's all nice. Come in here and change that to get the mail. It's not a constructor unless it has the same name as the class, of course. And just like before, all the code that's going to execute is going to execute inside of the run method. So we're going to create that. And what are we going to do? We're going to pretty much do the same thing. We're going to create a try block and then we're going to go thread sleep. And I'm going to say whatever start time they passed times a thousand. So for instance, if they passed over a value for start time of 10, it's going to sleep for 10 seconds before it proceeds on and does anything. So that's all thread sleep does. And then let's save ourselves some time by jumping over here, go into this catch block, copy that, jump back over here, paste that in there. So that's nice. And then what we're going to do with this guys, we're going to go system out, print line, and we're just going to say checking mail, even though it technically isn't going to do that. And we'll file save that. All right, so we created two different threads and they're both going to run at exactly the same time without causing any different problems. Well, now we got to come over here and allow them to execute. So I'm going to come in here right after I created our first thread that prints out the times and so forth. And I'm going to call runnable get mail is going to be the name of this thread. And I'm going to say new get the mail, call that constructor. And I'm going to say after 10 seconds, I want everything over there to execute. And let's just do this again. Let's go runnable, get mail again. And this guy is going to go get the mail. And instead of waiting 10 seconds, it's going to wait 20 seconds. And this down here is going to execute all the code that's going to print out the time. And then if you want to print out the thread for the with the runnable interface, you have to go new thread, get mail, right like that and then call start. So that's just a couple little differences here you have to, you know, put in there. And then if we want to run that other thread, so now we're going to be running three threads at once. I'm going to type in get mail again, and these are all our different threads. So we have get time, which is going to print these times over and over again. We have get mail, which is going to wait 10 seconds, and then it's going to print out, check the mail on the screen. And then this guy right here is going to wait 20 seconds and then do that. Execute. You can see it's printing out to the time and the date and the time and the date. 
And then right here, it's going to say check the mail. Yep, check and mail. And then after another additional 10 seconds, it's going to check for the mail again. So that's how you write threads and allow things to execute all at exactly the same time inside of Java. In the next tutorial, I'm going to show you more advanced, more newer techniques if you're using threads inside of Java. Leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.